two or more users can access this workbook at the same time. However, only one person out of those multiple users is allowed to make any changes. Everybody else gets a read-only option. In other words, they can only view the workbook. They can't make any changes. However, if I want to change that and allow them all to make changes to the same workbook at the same time, then I want to turn on the shared workbook feature, which is pretty cool because it highlights any changes made by others to the cells, and it actually colors the border of that cell color for each user. So Bobby can make a change to this cell. It'll give him a color like green. And then maybe Susie makes a change to that cell, give her blue. And then somebody up here has pink. And when I hover over those colored bordered cells, it'll actually tell me the person who made the change, the date and time they changed it, and what the data was prior to the change. Now to turn on this feature, it's pretty simple. Just come up here and click on the Review tab, come to the Changes group, and you actually have three choices. You have the Share Workbook, the most obvious. Track changes, which a drop down arrow to highlight the changes is what I'm going to be talking about, and the Protect and Share workbook. First of all, I want to tell you about the similarities between the three. All three of them will allow you to share the workbook where multiple users can open it up at the same time and make those changes at the same time. Another similarity is that they all keep a history of those changes, so you can later review that history and accept or reject those changes. Now, the differences. The shared workbook, anytime that somebody makes a change in the workbook, and I click on my Save button, it'll update that and show me and color the border around the cell like I was just talking about. When I hover over it, tell me who made the change to this cell, Bob, Susie, somebody else that's in the workbook at the same time that I am. Versus the Track Changes, again, this Highlight Changes here. When I use the Highlight Changes, it keeps track and highlights the changes that I make prior to saving it which is nice because if I have hundreds of columns and thousands of rows and I'm coming in here and just typing in a bunch of numbers making all these changes the moment I hit enter after I make a change it'll color the border of that cell so when I'm done I can verify that this is what I want before I click save so again the difference between the two is deciding when you click save after you click save do you want to see who made the changes by highlighting the border of the cells or do you want to be able to keep track of the changes before you click save of the changes that you make to these cells Again, both of them will keep a history, so if it doesn't matter to you whether you highlight those who have made changes or highlight your own changes, you can still view that history later on, which I'll show you when it comes to down here accepting or rejecting those changes. Okay? And then finally, you have the Protect and Share Workbook. Now, the protection comes in to prevent other people from turning off your sharing ability. Okay? Also, from turning off the history of those changes. Because if I turn off the history, later when I come in and go, well, gosh, who made the change here? That's incorrect. That number's wrong. I don't have a history. So I can only use one of these three options here. So I need to decide which one is going to work best for me with what I have to accomplish. First of all, let me show you the share workbook feature. Click on it. Now it's giving me an error here. It's saying, look, the workbook can't be shared because of the privacy settings that you have in your workbook. By default, I have it turned on where I don't want to share my name with anybody else which doesn't make sense to Excel because look, when you share a workbook and you make a change, those other people who are sharing the workbook when they click save and they want to update it, they want to see the name of the person that made the change. There's none of this anonymity between the workbooks as far as Excel is concerned. So it tells me, look, you want to go to the Excel Options dialog box and go to the Trust Center and the Trust Center settings and in the Privacy option you want to clear the checkbox to protect your privacy. Okay? So go ahead and click OK. Office Logo button, Excel Options, to the Trust Center, to the Trust Center settings, to the privacy option category and you see that remove personal information no I want to keep my personal information in there so when I make changes other people can see that that's me okay click OK click OK click on share workbook again and I don't get that error currently who's in this workbook right now well it's me if there were other people I'd see them down below but there isn't I'm the first person to turn the sharing feature on so it's just me and all I have to do is check this box that says allow changes by more than one user at the same time. I'm sharing. Some of the more advanced options come to your history. In other words, how much of a history do you want to keep track of when people make all these changes? Up to 30 days. Then if it goes beyond 30 days, it starts dropping off. Or I can just do 15 days. So in other words, up to 15 days, I can see the history of all the changes that have been made and accept or reject those changes. If it goes beyond 15, then it starts dropping off those days, okay? 16, 17, and 18. And then down below, update the changes. Well, I'll see the update of everybody else's changes when I save the file. Or I can do it automatically every 15 minutes, and so on. But I'll do it when I click the Save button and click OK. Now watch what happens before I click OK here. Up in the title bar, I want you to notice when I click OK down here, it adds between the brackets shared. That tells me that this workbook is now in share mode. So anybody else can access this workbook at the same time and make changes at the same time that I make my changes. 
Well, next, I need to put this on a network or a shared folder so other people can have access to it. To do that, after I turned on the shared option, again, we're just talking about this option here. We'll go over these other two options in the next video here. I'm going to come up here, click on the Save As button, and I have a folder here that's pointing to the network drive. Double click on Shared, and I'm just going to plop it right down in there and click Save. Now everybody has access to it. Again, if I want to find out who's currently within the workbook, come up here to the Review tab to the Changes, click on Share Workbook, and come to the Editing. It's just me. I'm going to click Cancel. Now I'm going to ask my buddy here, John, to go on to another computer and open up this workbook so I can show you what it looks like when other people are accessing this workbook at the same time. Okay, he's accessed it. Come up here, click on the Share Workbook. There he is. He's on the Dreamforce computer, so now there's two of us. Of course, if I don't like what he's doing, I can always remove the user. It temporarily kicks him out. It'll annoy him because when he makes changes and he clicks Save, it'll say you can't do that. He has to actually close out of the workbook and reopen it again, and then he can come back in and make changes. So I won't annoy him now, but we'll continue. Click OK. Now any changes that I make, remember this feature only tracks other changes that other people make. You still get the history of changes that you make and others make, but this is just a matter of look. Do you want it to be highlighted when other people make the changes after you click Save? So that's why I use the Share Workbook. So if I make changes, hit Enter and Changes and click Save. Nothing, OK? Now I'm going to have John make some changes and we'll see what happens. OK, I asked him to save it after he made his changes. Now I'll go ahead and come up here and click Save to see the changes that he made. Click OK, and you can see he made three changes here to this cell. When I hover over it, it says Dreamforce made the change December 22nd at uh, about 8 o'clock, and it changed it from the previous of 350 to 1. And I hover over that one. It gives me a pop-up of what it was before, changing to 22, and also the last cell here as well. Now when I come in here and I make a change, and I do something else, and I update the workbook and hit enter, those highlights disappear. But again, that's okay, because later on I'm going to show you how to go through the history of these cells and accept or reject those changes. Again, this is just a temporary, hey, look what he just changed effect with those colored cells. Now I have a question. What would happen if I come up in this cell and I make a change at the same time John made the change, and then I click Save? In other words, I have conflicting numbers. Probably the best thing to do is before I make any changes to go ahead and click on the Save button to see what changes he made and then go ahead and make my changes in the other cells. But it's not a perfect world. I can't always click here and click Save constantly to make sure that I'm not editing things that he's editing. So there may come a time where we conflict and let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and ask John to make a change here to uh, cell B4, type in the number and click Save. Okay, he's clicked Save. Now, I'm not going to click Save to see what the changes that he made to this cell, but I'm just going to ignore it, and let's say I'm going to make my own change here. So now when I click Save, what's going to happen is it's going to come across the network with his number, saying, well, this is his new number, but it's going to conflict with my new number, and it's going to try to resolve that with some options. So when I click Save, there it is. It says, look, we have conflicting changes. Dreamforce, or John, said that he wanted to make the new change to 100, and prior to that, it was 150. Again, 150, but I want to make it 5. So I can either accept mine or accept his. If I accept his, then it changes to 100. I click OK, I hover over it, and again, it's Dreamforce, and they changed it to 150 to 100. Click off in a blank area. And then finally, what I want to show you in this training video before we go to the next one, when we talk about the um, highlight changes, that option to share your workbook and protect a shared workbook is, I want to show you what you can do to accept or reject changes. I want you to look at the history here of all the changes that have been made thus far. So when I click on accept or reject, remember, it only keeps uh, track of the history up to 15 days. After 15 days, it starts dropping off. I have three options. Which changes do I want to view? Those that haven't been reviewed yet, or by who? Everyone, or by me, by somebody else, or where. I just want to view the changes. Click on the collapsible dialog box button, and then click and drag and select the range that you'd like to keep track if there were any changes with, made within that range. Expand it. Well, to keep it simple, I'm just going to say, I want to view all those that haven't been reviewed yet, OK? And click OK. Gives me a pop-up. This is change one of seven. Well, the first change says it was by me. The default was 400, and I want to change it to 100. So it not only keeps track of other people's changes, but mine as well. So I can go ahead and accept it and it keeps it at 100. And then we have others here. Well, original value 275 was changed to 200, and then it was changed by Dreamforce to 22. So which one do I want? Because we're all trying to change the cell at the same time. Do I want the original value, the change I made, or the change that Dreamforce made? Well, I'll just say Dreamforce and click Accept, so it's 22. Now, if I'm beginning to trust everybody and say, look, Dreamforce has made changes, I like everything, I could just go ahead and, and click on Accept All. 
and then it does two things. It first accepts all the changes, but then it clears the history because it assumes that once you've gone through the history and you've made your sound judgment of accepting or rejecting those changes, it thinks, okay, we're done, we can clear out, and then we can continue on from there to keep track of any future changes. Okay, let's go to the next training video and I'll talk about how to share your workbook with highlighting your changes or protecting and sharing a workbook. Okay, this is the part two of how to share your workbooks. Now, if you haven't watched the previous training video on sharing the workbook, you want to watch that before you continue with this training video so you don't get confused. So on that note, I haven't made any changes since the last training video here, at least when it comes to sharing the workbook. You can see it's still shared. What I want to do is I want to be able to change it from sharing my workbook. In other words, when I click Save, keeping track and highlighting the cells of changes that other people have made within the cell, I now want to make it all about me. I want to be able to change it from track changes to highlight my changes before I click save. So when I click on highlight changes and I leave the defaults alone, you see where it says track changes while editing. It's going to track my changes. No longer is it going to keep track of anybody else's. And what I mean by that is tracking as far as highlighting the border of the cell that the changes have been made to. It will still keep track of the history where later on I can accept or reject those changes, but as far as highlighting it, it's now all about me. So when are the highlights going to take place since I last saved it? And it's going to highlight my changes on the screen. So when I click OK, it's going to say, well, no changes were found. Well, I haven't made any yet. So when I come in here and I make a change, 300 and hit Enter, it actually highlights it, and it's me. So when I hover over that, it says it's me. I made this change. This was the previous value here, which is nice for two reasons. First of all, if I have a lot of changes to make, and before I click Save, I want to come back here and go, gosh, you know what, these numbers, they don't look right. At least I can hover over it and go, oh, okay, well, that was the previous number. I guess I'm okay with that. You know, I can keep track of that. And also keep track of what cells I made changes to. Of course, when I click Save, it removes it. Now, at the same time, from this point forward, using this option here, highlighting changes, it's all about me. So when I click Save, if there were other changes made by John on another computer to the same workbook, when I click Save, it's not going to bring in his changes. It'll just actually make the change without highlighting the cell. For example, I'll have John make the change to this cell right here. And I'll ask him to save it, and then I'll come up here and click Save, and it says it's been updated, and you can see that it's been changed, but when I click OK and I click off, it's no longer colored or the border around it, notifying me of those changes that he made. Still keeps track of the history, so I can come up here and click on the drop-down arrow and accept or reject changes that haven't been reviewed yet and click OK. So it keeps track of my changes. I can accept. Keeps track of his changes. Um, well, there we go up to cell B4 and reject it. But again, it's all a preference. Do you want to be able to highlight the cells that after you click the Save button that other users have made to come into your workbook? Or do you want to highlight the cells that you make before you click the Save button here? And then finally, we have the Protect Shared Workbook. Now this one, you can't turn on when it's already in shared mode. This one's selfish. This one, you have to do it from the get-go. So for example, if I come up here and say, look, I want to put a password on here so nobody can come in and undo the sharing of this workbook by coming down here, clicking Highlight Changes, and unchecking this. Don't want that to happen. So I'll click Cancel, or I don't want them to come up here and click on Share Workbook and uncheck this and stop the sharing. Don't want that to happen either, so I'll click Cancel. So what I want to do is I want to click on the Protect Shared Workbook, and I want to enable sharing, of course, but notice down here it has the password. I cannot apply a password to a workbook that's already been shared. I have to unshare it first, or I have to start from scratch where it's not shared, and then click on Protect Shared Workbook. So let me click Cancel. Let me go ahead and unshare the workbook. Click on the Share Workbook button. First of all, let's dump and remove the user Dreamforce from here and click OK. He's bumped out. Now he's probably angry when he's typed in all these numbers and he wants to click Save and it won't let him do it. So he has to close out and reopen it again. But let me go ahead and uncheck this to stop the sharing. Click OK. It says, are you sure? Click Yes. Up at the top in the title bar, the brackets with shared in it has been removed, so it's no longer sharing. Okay. Now, from scratch, I can come up here and use the Protect and Share, where it allows me to share the workbook, and it opens up the password where I can type in the password, hit Enter, type it in again to verify, hit Enter, and now it's in action. Go ahead and click OK. Now, it'll share the workbook. You can see that up on the title bar here. It also keep track of the history of the workbook, any changes you make so you can accept or reject them later on. Again, accept or reject. But the one thing that people can't do is they can't come up here and try to uncheck the sharing. Nope, can't do it there. Click the drop down arrow, highlight changes, can't do it there. The only way they can do that is unprotecting the shared workbook. Now, if they do that and they do have the password, it'll stop the workbook from being shared. For example, click on it, type in the password, hit enter. It says, look, this action is going to remove the workbook from being shared. If I click no, 
then I'm back to square one. Again, click on the share. I can't uncheck the workbook. So if I unprotect it and I type in the password, hit enter, and I click yes, well, it's no longer shared, but it's also no longer protected as well. But I guess that wouldn't matter because if you're not sharing, what's the point of protecting? You might as well put a password on your workbook, in which case I refer you to my Pass Protect the Workbook training video. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.